don't get caught with a dull knife. In this video, I'm going to show you how to sharpen, take care of, and make it last forever. Stick around. Hey folks, glad y'all stopped by camp today. I'm going to show you my top tips and tricks for having a sharp knife. But not only that, let's know how to keep it sharp, clean them, take care of them. Now, there's all kinds of knives out there. You can get a cheap knife, you can get a good knife, you can get a handmade knife. Probably my most favorite of all, the cowboy hash knife. Now, made in the USA by my good friend Tom Willoughby, you can do a lot of things with that, and we'll get into that a little bit later. It used to just be three things that I ever knew that you sharpened the knife with. One of them was a razor strap. You remember them? Sitting in that barber chair and you're going to get a shave and you see him break out that straight razor. <laughs> Number two was one of them old fashioned whip rock stones. You just drawed it one way, took it back the other. They was a coarse side and a smooth side. Now the other thing that my grandma used probably as much as anything I've ever seen in my life, crock jar. I've seen her drag that old knife back and forth there on the inside of this or turn it over and use the bottom side of it. There's a lot of them newfangled gadgets out there today. This is one I probably see more than anywhere. They got this little steel in here, a little V. When you put that knife in there and you drag it away from you, I don't feel like it sharpens as much as it maybe tears the edge off of it. If you maybe got an old knife that's in bad shape and you can't get it sharpened and you don't think the angle of the blade is right, run her through there till maybe you so you get the angle to the right point. I'm thinking I might use one of them on an old knife that I'm trying to create an edge back to, but not really to sharpen something. But I do like this old butcher steel that I've had for about 20 years, and it is like an old steel wet rock in a way. You can barely see the grooves in there. I can run something across here this, it's long enough that I get the full stroke in the knife. When you go to sharpen a knife, I'm gonna tell you, I like to get about this angle. What is that? I'm thinking about like a 45 degree angle off a of 90, okay? Now have I ever got a protractor on there and measured it? No, it's what's comfortable in my hand with the bend of my arm. Take that handle and grab it right at the end of the handle on each side. And then just run it at the, about the same angle that you hold in your hand. Run her here, turn her up. Bottom side, here. Now I know a lot of folks that'll bring it here, here staying on the same side all the time. But you'll get to where you got that rhythm and it's gonna be just like making music. Any knife in the world, every knife's gonna sound a little different. So it's like a 45 degree angle running from the base, always start with the handle in and pull down. Base to tip, every stroke. And you wanna stay even. You ever get a blade that's not even, it ain't gonna get sharp. What is the last thing it gets? a good polishing to hold that edge even longer, make it stay better. That is a good piece of bull hide leather, smooth surface on this side, and I like to take the knife, turn the sharp side to me, and just take that same stroke from tip to base all the way down. That's three, that's four. Then we're gonna take it and bring it back here. Never do I wanna bring it back sharp sided to me cause it would slip off and cut out my liver. It'll make that steel shine, but it'll polish that edge on there. It'll keep it longer. A dull knife will cut you and it will hurt. It takes longer. Sharp knife cuts you, get it over with a whole lot quicker. Keeping a knife sharp will help it stay sharp a whole lot longer. Or you store it before you put it somewhere clean and dry. But stainless steel like this, it ain't never gonna rust. This is a wood handle. It gets washed and then what does it get? olive oil, mineral oil, anything like that. I just like to run her across there, make sure, but get the wood itself, folks. Give it a good soaking in there, everywhere. And folks might ask, well, how often do you oil it? I use this thing nearly every day. I should oil it every day because it's out here in Mother Nature's kitchen getting a lot of elements thrown at it. Now, if you're in a house and you clean it, you polish it, you oil it, Hey, you can probably get back with twice a week. Don't stick this in the dishwasher. Hear me? Let's talk about this handy dandy hash knife cowboy special. It's handmade, hand forged by my good friend Tom Willoughby. So many of you have asked, so many of you might already own one. It is not an Ulu, folks. 
it is a cowboy hash knife with a handle that you can grab a hold of. Now, Ulu usually has the handle attached to the blade here where you got to hold on to it or you're scraping or you're skinning. The hash knife has always been a part of an old chuck wagon cook's process because it had so many uses. He didn't have a lot of room, folks. This took the place of 14 other modern tools in your kitchen with just one knife. Hash knives for cowboys have been around forever. Cooking part of history that went down the trail with old cookies so many years ago. So if we're gonna go back to history, let me drag out the first one that I had. Was gifted to me by a good friend of mine, D.B. Hurt, Roaring Springs, Texas. Said his great-great-grandmother give it to him in Arkansas. Say you're going antique shopping and you run across one of these. First of all, folks, Look and make sure how much give they got in here. Them old rivets here on both sides can be bratted back again with a hammer and a wagon wheel or an anvil. Just hit it. You can tighten that up. I ask you to look really close at the edge of that blade when you start. Does it have any big chips, gadgets, or any scars in it that are going to make it really hard to sharpen? Remember the thickness of the blade. How long has it been used? Maybe this old thing is wore out. Make sure you know what you're getting if you're shopping for one of these when you're antiquing. But I use it a lot to chop some vegetables. Now, it's a rolling motion for me when I'm doing this right here. Just roll it right across there. We're going to roll the same way, but you can just roll it back and forth as you're cutting. So, you take that same thing that you rolled, what you going to do to it now? It's a chopper. You can do this chopping, slicing, dicing. Say you want to cut some stew meat up. It's the same process. Just take that meat, roll her across here, go across the grain. It's better to push and slide something down through a piece of meat than it is to start chopping if the meat is uncooked. I like to take it, fingers here, thumb here, and I'm going to sharpen it the same way I did them others. Here, here. This is a little more bulky here because it's shorter to hang on to. So. I'm going to layer that down a little to where it's pretty close to the same angle as what I'm holding in this hand. Just a half moon roll is all we're doing. But remember, we got to do an equal amount on each side. Now, if you don't feel comfortable doing it that way, folks, get it on the edge of the counter. Take that same steel that you're going to sharpen with. Run it across here just like you would sharpen an old hole with a file. These are old sawmill blades that Tom has reclaimed, polished, stamped out, and cut just right. But they also sharpen easier than quicker than anything I've ever had in my life. Then we're going to dry it really, really well. Sometimes I'll catch myself if I'm in the house lighting a burner and just laying there, there flipping it over, polishing. Remember? Same way. I slide it away from me. And you, I'll tell you what might be easier for y'all to do this if you want to just take it. Don't run your finger down here on it, but just put that leather on it and just keep polishing. Not oil it, remember? I like to use any food safe mineral oil, but I'm oiling here, here, the handle, all the attachments to it, dry it off just a tad to get the excess oil off of it. It is ready to go, folks. We hope you enjoyed. We hope you've learned something on how to take care of a knife, how to sharpen a knife, how to treat that knife. Anything that we might have used in here product-wise, you can always look in the little description. Shan will have it there. She takes care of you every trip. It is right below the video. It's a great day above the grass as it is every day. Hit that subscribe button. God bless you. See you down the trail. So, folks, we've talked about these hash knives, so let's go meet old Tom and see how he makes them. Cut them out with the plasma cutter. We have to grind back to this line. And see what Kim's doing. Wire brush. A lot of 
lot of work to it. There she is. Dang. She does good work here. She always wins Employee of the Month. Once again, it's Kimberly, uh, employee of the year. She's sanding the rough ground handle on these knives. There's a lot of work goes Before. into these. Before. What are you doing now? I'm cleaning up the excessive uh, epoxy with a Dremel tool. Here is once again the uh, employee of the year at the Cowboy Hash Knife Knivery. She's applying food safe mineral oil to the knives. It's Cowboy Hash Knives made right here in the USA by me and my wife. Handmade right here in Willoughby Forge. Have a good day.